sometimes I buy shoes for a specific reason, you know, because I need work shoes or because I need shoes to go with my tuxedo or shoes to go to church, I mean, all that kind of stuff. But every once in a while, I run, a pair, run across a pair of shoes that just makes me smile. And my motto is, if they make me smile, I'm gonna buy them, flat out. And I think this is sort of what I think about when I think about the Gulda on this concert. Uh, every time I study it, every time I hear it, every time I think about it, I just smile because um, it breaks the mold completely. And that's one of the reasons that it's on the program. It totally breaks the mold. I mean, you think about, Gulda was a guy who was, first of all, he enters conservatory at age 12. I mean, he's totally a child prodigy well on his way to a very established piano career as a soloist, um, well known for his interpretations of Bach and Beethoven. And then in 1951, while he's in America, he runs across this guy named Dizzy Gillespie and this thing called American Jazz, and his mind is totally blown. And now all of a sudden, Goulda becomes a revolutionary. I mean, this is the guy who who wants to put Beethoven and Miles Davis on the same program. I mean, you, you, if I read somewhere, you, it's not unlikely to see a relationship between Beethoven and bebop and, uh, and Mozart and Miles Davis or, 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 or anything that is sort of out, out of the ordinary. And I think he sort of fancied himself in this regard as a revolutionary. So when he comes to this cello concerto, all the things that are now Gulda are in this cello concerto. His great love for classical music is in this cello concerto. I mean, this, the, the idol, the second movement, for example, is this sort of wonderful picture of the Austrian countryside. But the first movement is his clear love of rock and roll. And the cellist is called on right away to set the mood that says, you are someplace else, baby, so hang on, you know. And, and, and then, you know, by the time you get to the end of that first movement, you're like, oh my gosh, what's coming next? And then comes this beautiful horn quartet, French horn quartet. And then, of course, there's, this menu, there's a lovely minuet in one movement. There's a cadenza that sounds improvisatory in, in, in another moment. There's a, there's a moment that you hear polka music. There's, I mean, it's all over the map. And when you're sitting in the Holland, you're going to think to yourself, where in the world am I? And that's the coolest thing. And probably, hopefully, while you're thinking, where in the world am I? There'll be a big smile on your face.